So my super patron Renee on patreon.com asked if I would design a toilet paper cover and I was like yeah because forever I've been wanting some kind of cozy cover that I could easily slip on my rolls of toilet paper that was classy yet cool and textured in my favorite color that I could make on my large gauge loom with a single strand of worsted weight yarn and so yeah hey it's Denise from lumahat.com and that's what I'm going to show you how to make on this video now I do have two versions one that's open and one with the top closed because I wanted to put some flowers and stuff on the top one that is more textured with a broken rib stitch and one with a simple rib stitch but this one is more complicated to make and so I wanted to show you how to leave this opening and tell you at the end how you could close this top and make this stitch but this is the one I want to focus on the video. Both are in the written pattern and I'll leave a link in the description. All right, for the project, you're gonna need 36 peg loom, 34 yards of worsted weight yarn, hook, needle, scissors, and optional markers. For more information and links, you can go to lumahead.com forward slash toilet dash paper dash cover. All right, without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to start with my stitch marker placement because for you guys, some of you guys, this is helpful. Personally, I start with my first peg and then I'm going to do every fourth peg only because this is a knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. It's really two stitches, but I didn't want to do every other one because it was too much. Uh, so this tells me that everywhere there's a stitch marker, I should be doing a knit stitch. And for me, this is helpful and it's a happy medium where I didn't overdo it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is the cast on and we're gonna do a drawstring cast on of 36 pegs, which means it's the whole knitting loom and we're gonna knit in the round. Now again, we're using one strand of worsted weight yarn and I'm going to secure it to my anchor peg using a simple knot. You could use a stitch mark, I'm sorry, you could use a slip knot if that's more comfortable and take your yarn between the first and last peg and any direction you go is gonna be the same. So no biggie, I'm going towards um, the right. Okay, we're going to start with the yarn behind peg one, bring it, put it in front of two, behind peg three, and then in front of peg four. So we're doing like a zigzag type of cast on. And if you look from behind, you'll see that basically you have one peg in with the uh, working yarn in front, one behind, one in front, one behind. And you're gonna continue to do that on all of your pegs. Um, putting it basically um, behind that last, I'm sorry, in front of that last peg and behind peg one. And then you're gonna loosely lay it over the next few pegs. I usually do four or five. And then hold my working yarn with my uh, left hand. And then I'm gonna skip peg one because it doesn't have two loops. And I'm going to start with peg two, which has two loops on the peg and take the bottom over the top and knit off. Then I'm going to go to peg four and I knit off. And now I'm gonna take my working yarn from the back, bring it back in front of the loom and then I'm gonna lay it over the next few pegs, four, five, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Take the working yarn behind, hold it with your other hand. And then again, you're going to knit off every peg that has two loops which again is every other peg and you're going to continue to do this so if you're looking closely it's just every other peg every other peg has two loops which is actually the even numbered pegs now once you knit off the last peg which is peg 36 you will be done with your cast on and then you are ready to knit row one where you're basically just going to knit 35 pegs using the u-wrap version of the knit stitch now only on row one peg one does not have a loop 
So you're going to take the working yarn and lay it loosely over peg one and peg two. That's why you're only going to be knitting 35 pegs instead of 36. So the way you do the U wrap knit stitch is that you take the working yarn, half wrap the peg, take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. That is your U wrap knit stitch. And because you skipped peg one only on row one, you just have 35 more pegs to knit for row one. Once you knit off that last peg, which is peg 36, you're done with row one and you're ready for row two where you're gonna knit one, purl one until the end of the row. But first, before we do that, make sure to take the knot off the anchor peg. You no longer need to secure your yarn. And if you forget and leave this, it's not gonna be a good thing. All right, so now we're going to knit one. So we half wrap and knit off because we're using the U wrap version of the knit stitch. And then you take the yarn and you put it under the existing loop with your hook from the top. You're going to scoop up that working yarn and create a new loop. You're gonna take the existing loop off the peg and put the new, new loop on the peg and pull the working yarn to tighten that stitch. All right. Let's do that one more time. Half wrap the peg to do your U-wrap version of the knit stitch, knit off, and then take that working yarn and put it under the existing loop for your purl. From the top with your hook, scoop up and create a new loop. You're gonna take the old loop off the peg, put the new loop on, and pull the working yarn to tighten the stitch. By the way, that knit purl, knit purl is also known as a one by one rip stitch and while you guys continue to knit i want to say thank you to carol maple from promise learning atl elise Bitron, penny pitchard robert ledger and joel gittleman for covering the cost of closed captioning this video for you thanks guys all right keep knitting you need to finish this row for me to be able to tell you what's going on with row three, which is a knit 36, or in other words, knit the row. Once you finish knitting those 36 pegs, you've knit the row, you're ready for rows four through 39, where you're just gonna repeat rows two and three 18 more times and for those that get a little confused let me give you a visual of these repeats here is one repeat here's a second repeat here's a third and here's a fourth you're just repeating rows one uh two and three and you need to do that 18 times all right let me give you a quick look at what your fabric is going to look like before it's stretched out while it's still on the loom because some folks get a little confused when they see that it's still on the loom this is what it looks like and another thing that i want to show you in case you put your work down and you don't know where you left off if you pull the loop off of one of your um, even numbered pegs you can tell here whether that's a knit or a purl this happens to be a purl and i know that because the uh, stitch sits in front of the loop that was on the peg if you look at the one under it it's actually behind that's a knit stitch so if i see this i know that i did a purl stitch on that peg and it's going to let me know whether I'm on an even or odd number um, of rows. This is a purl stitch, that's a knit stitch, and that's a purl. And you can tell by the placement, and that'll let you know what row you're on. And if you use stitch markers, that will let you know what stitch you're on. So if this is a rib stitch, you know that that's uh, wherever there's a stitch marker, it's a knit stitch and the next one will be a purl. Once you're done with your repeats, you're ready for your drawstring cast off of those 36 pegs. So you start by taking your working yarn and you're gonna wrap it around your loom at least one full time. Get your scissors, cut the working yarn, and then you could do this with your hook or a needle. With the hook, you're gonna go from the top and scoop up the yarn and feed it completely through. 
Um, I sometimes will use a needle because I can double the working yarn and so I like it better. If you do that, here's how you would thread that needle. The needle you would take from the bottom up and then feed the working yarn through the loop completely. Make sure that you do all of your 36 pegs. If you're kind of short on the string, you can take your hook and take some of the loops off the pegs. You could do this during or when you're completely done uh, getting that drawstring through all of the loops. Once you've, you're sure that all of your loops have the drawstring through them, then take your hook or the needle or your fingers and take the loops off of the pegs. Make sure you get all of them and make sure that there's a drawstring through them. And by the way, you want to know your cast on from your cast off. So if you want to, when you're done doing this, you can go ahead and make a knot on a drawstring so you could, so you can tell the cast on from the cast off. And then go ahead and stretch your stitches. If you don't, they look really funky and the pattern does not work, right? So this may seem like not a biggie, but it is. You need to stretch your stitches so that your project can become what you meant to do. All right, so here um, you see how it's hard to tell which is which, so that's why I recommend making a knot. Now you should do the knot while the fabric is still on the loom so you can tell where the drawstring cast on from the cast off is, but I just wanted to show you what I meant when I said a knot. Now find the cast on and go ahead and start pulling on it. You want to narrow the opening but not completely close it. So you're pulling on the drawstring and you just want it the size of the regular roll the middle. My roll I wanted you to see is approximately five inches in diameter. It is a mega roll but the fabric stretches and so it's going to fit just about any roll that you have and I like to put the fabric, uh, the cover on the roll of toilet paper so that I can um, adjusted and do my finishing uh, I so I can finish the project while the cover is on a um, roll of toilet paper and I prefer to do this with the largest size because then I know that any size will work all right so here I am pulling on the cast off drawstring and I like to pull on the loops uh, independently each one of them separately it kind of helps me keep better control than if I just pull on that um, you'll see that it doesn't do it evenly this is a better way and I stretch the fabric uh, to where I want it as I do this right same thing on the top I, I will pull on the drawstring until it's the size that I want uh, the size of the opening that I want both on the bottom and the top and you can see that you can add more rows or have less rows however you want to customize it you can add more or less rows um, i prefer a happy medium that's just my personality on everything in life including this project so um it is on there without getting too carried away you have to make sure you don't close this too much because then you can't take the cover on and off of the roll so you want it just enough so that it's snug so it doesn't show so much when you turn it over but not so much that you can't take it off which is why I like to put it on and then start tightening. Now you're going to uh, thread a needle with your yarn and I'm going to start up at the top. And as you can see, I take my needle and I feed the working yarn, the drawstring, through those loops, through those cast on loops. But I don't pull on the string because I don't want to close this. I want it to stay open. And so... I take my needle and I feed it through the loops. If you want to close it like this, then as you're feeding the needle through the loops, you're pulling it until you completely close it. That's how you do that. But in my case, I like it open 
because I want it to look like it's a roll of toilet paper. It's just nice and fancy and covered um, and just, I don't know, I feel better when my when there's they're covered if I'm going to leave them out for my guests to um, have immediate access to it. All right, so again, I am doing it till it's where I want it to be and then I am going to now secure it and I'll put it inside because I'm going to weave in the ends. All right, with this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to um, thread a needle with the other end. Uh, with the cast off drawstring and then just like before I'm going to feed the needle through the loops but I'm not going to pull on it anymore it's exactly where I want it to be I don't need it to be any tighter and I'm not going to go completely around I'm just going to go through a few of them and then go in the opposite direction on the last two that I'm going to do and that's where I'm going to make a knot so I bring the string in I take the cover off of the roll of toilet paper because now I want to weave in my ends and I want to do that on the inside of the cover. So I am I took it off the roll of paper and now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through those loops from that pearl part of it and I go in a few and then I turn around and go in the opposite direction. I feel like the yarn is more secure that way and then I make a knot. I'm going to do the same thing uh, and I cut off the excess yarn of course. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. I'm going to thread my needle with that drawstring and I'm going to feed that uh, going upwards uh, through a couple of those uh, loops. Then I go in the opposite direction in order to kind of secure the yarn uh, better. And then just a couple of them I go upward then I'm going to make a knot and secure that yarn and just like before get my scissors and cut off the excess and now my cover is done and I can put it uh, on this project it will fit your smaller rolls of paper uh, because again it's a uh, it's a very elastic um, it contracts and stretches to fit whatever roll of toilet paper you're using. So knit in your favorite color, put some personality to it. You can accessorize it like I did here. Um, it's so fun. You could do so many things. Now for this one, like I was telling you before, all you're gonna do is all of your rolls will be a one by one rib you're not going to do any rows of um where you knit the 36 pe uh, 36 pegs you're only doing the one by one rib stitch on all of your rows to get this fabric all right guys that's it be sure to share this video because it helps me a lot comment let me know what you think and by all means subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything and come back and loom with me again.